It's Friday, March 11, 2022, and this is Dan Excelsior, the Mostly Marvel Podcast. I'm Dennis, and I'll be your host as we review the latest Marvel happenings across all media, as well as other superpowered stories that caught our attention. Uh, and when I say we, I'm referring to my wonderful co-host, which I'm going to get out here right now. Uh, he's been knee-deep in Elden Rings, like, pretty much since we talked last time. So, uh, yeah, let's bring out Frank. Yeah, nothing, nothing in that has changed since last week. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where, like, I'm just boring now. When, whenever I make conversations, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I got the Azure crown and, like, saying stupid stuff like that. And it's like, man, am I this bad? I'm, I'm yeah. this bad. Yeah. I, that's, uh, that was me when I played Skyrim. Like, mm -hmm. Skyrim, just my world. It was all, it was, I had multiple lives going on in that game. But, um, <laughs> nice. but yeah. I get it. As long as you're having fun, it's cool. I mean, everybody's got to do what they got to do during pandemic times. To I'm never happen. sure that I am having fun when I'm playing a Souls game. Like, I always, it, it, it rides that line, that really delicate line of fun and just self-flagellation. <laughs> nice. Well, speaking of self-flagellation, let's get our other host out here. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's still torturing himself, uh, finishing up finals by this weekend. Uh, it's Ricky. Yeah, I'm, I'm torturing myself by self graduation. Yep. So hopefully, in the hopes to get self graduation. <laughs> oh, you rhymed a nonsense word with an yeah. actual word. It was yeah. pretty impressive. Pretty I, good. I like that. I like You're gonna, that. You could sell your CDs in parking lots now. That's pretty I good. Could, I'll sign it for you too. <laughs> and this is this is for the communication uh, degree. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You know. Quizlet is a great invention. I'll just say that, you know. Definitely oh, don't know no. How you, guys, how you guys did school without it. No, like you cheater. Number, number two pencils. Oh, what's a Scantron? It's a Scantron. I, rem I miss those <laughs> things. <laughs> it wasn't even just for, for Scantrons, but yeah. Yeah, for blue books and stuff, too. What's a, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What's a blue book? It that was I like uh, It was like a book where you had to write, like, uh, you know paragraphs and stuff like that yeah you, know, you, had, to, you had to have specific books that you, you had to write for that. that specific little book thing yeah okay okay yeah it's like they're like 12 pages or something long and they're just meant to you're just meant to write a freaking mini miniature book in some finals sometimes okay yeah i yeah. never had to do that that's cool I, I skated by it's not cool it's not cool it's not cool then yeah well we got no guests this week so it's gonna be another fun weird one uh, you know, we I think we stayed mostly on the on the on track last week uh, when we talked about the Batman. Uh, but oh. this one's going to get a little weird, um, you know, like as promised, uh, if, in case you hadn't noticed, um, we'll be putting a spotlight on 1996's barbed wire tonight. Uh, but before that, we have some nerd news to discuss and a round of <laughs> trivia that we call Contest of Champions. For those of you joining us live, don't be shy. We'll be checking the comments regularly, and if you can't get enough of us, you should visit patreon.com slash denxmedia, where you'll find a variety of creative offerings, including recent episodes of our live after show, The Soapbox. Patreons get exclusive access to chat with us, but if that's not your thing, don't worry. We'll be releasing it to the public next week. I just put last week's Soapbox up uh, about five content minutes Content delivered. Ago. Yeah, content <laughs> delivered. Um, and it was an interesting one, Ricky, because uh, you weren't there, and we kind of thought it would go short. And then we just blabbed on for like two hours. We we did like we it was like a uh, an analogy for the Batman because we thought it was going to end, and then we just we found another topic. It really just kept going. I don't even yeah. remember what we talked about at a certain point, but I think a, a uh, we had out, we did have a patron Batman in there. Still good. What's up in your brain? A week away for a week removed from the Batman. If a game or if a movie is not in the A zone for me i stopped thinking about it after the following yeah. or the, the weekend right so it, it got a little dumber during the week and then i stopped thinking about it so it's, yeah. it's it, it, it tracks it's right in the b zone i think yeah which, yeah which is what i gave it anyway so 
if yeah. it's a C, I'm done venting about it by Sunday. Like if it's a C, <laughs> and then uh, yeah. that's it. You know what I mean? That's I'm, where yeah, I try I'm, to live I'm, in terms of school is the B zone. So <laughs> the B zone, good. Yeah, that's what Quizlet's for. So you just get, <laughs> Quizlet. You have no idea what you're talking about. No, Quiz Quizlet is like a. There's like it's like flashcards, but it's online and it gives you like answers to stuff. You oh, have to pay okay. a fee though, don't you, Ricky? There's a lot of free Quizlets out there. You can pay oh, for the yeah, free ones. Oh, okay. So when you're not doing Quizlets, are, have you been nerding out on anything this week, Ricky? Um, what have I been doing? Um, I haven't played Elden Ring at all. I I still it's there. I feel cool for buying it. I fell into the hype. But yeah, I've not turned that shit on for another week. I want to get back into it. I feel like I fucked up on my character though. Like I, I've heard, if, if you're not a magic per, or if you're not a, a souls person, magic's the way to go. And I did not go magic. Okay, okay. First, first of all, I highly disagree with with magic being the way to go as a magic user. However, that being mm. said, after 50 hours, I can melt bosses with this sick magic laser. So yeah, I want eventually, give, me, give me the laser. Yeah, eventually there's a good payoff, but in the beginning, oh man, you're like a, a glass BB gun, not even a glass cannon. You're like a glass piece of crap that just gets killed and doesn't do any damage. <laughs> you see, you see, I didn't even ask Frank what he's nerding out on this week. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, definitely Elden Rings. I've been up to like three almost every night, and I'm all like, one one night I went to bed at two, and uh, my wife woke up and she's like, "Wow, you're coming to bed early." And I thought she was being sarcastic, but she was being genuine. And I'm like, wow, okay, I guess I am. Nice. Good I've, stuff. What I've been nerding out on on uh, you on Netflix. <laughs> I, I heard that's a good show. Like that that it, was, or everyone was nerding out on that last year, right? Was it Yeah, yeah. Ago? The 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 third season came out in like uh, a few months ago, like in October or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the second season came out uh like a few months before the pandemic started too so um what i didn't realize because like i watched it because i honestly i watched it because i tried to watch lost in space season three and it wasn't giving me the damn season recap for the last two seasons and mm -hmm. i couldn't remember what the hell happened to like i haven't watched that show for years and i'm like i'm not gonna watch you if i don't get the recap so i just like netflix recommended you wait they, they, don't like, they don't have like a trailer like the the I recap couldn't find it independent anywhere the... in there. I couldn't yeah, find it wrong. anywhere in there, and so I, was, I found I something. Just... Yeah, yeah well, you, I was. Uh, I was just on Netflix, and I was lazy. And then it said, "Like, hey, you might like this." And so I just clicked it, and it's quite charming. Quite charming. We're oh, watching. Oh, let's oh, see here. Sorry, Selena asked if we are watching Abbott Elementary yet. One, two, and, three. And that is. That is a big no. I have not started watching that. That is fourth on my list of things to watch right now. We we started watching the dropout. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's the, the dropout, the Theranos it's, story. Yeah, from Amanda it's on Hulu. Mm -hmm. Who's who's Theranos? Theranos, the company. The company that now. promised to make like a a blood testing that could you could just do one. All you needed was one drop of blood mm -hmm. to test your blood, but like it was, it was testing for what though. For it whatever, just ran a bunch of blood diseases. tests. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like okay. you do it at home, basically. It was all all a sham. Because you know, when you get your blood tested, they take so much of it, right? Like they take a lot of blood. They, they like, do take and, a vial, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I usually get. Well, if I get like the full works, it's like eight vials, and I'm like, oh, yeah. what the? F One of those <laughs> goes, to, goes to blade, and then yeah. you know, seven of those. It's like a tithe. Yeah. yeah. It, it's so much. It goes so, to the council of vampires. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, maybe it's like it, it's it's uh dependent on the the less sex you have, that's the more uh the more blood they take. Maybe that's. Yeah, that's what it is. It's definitely it keeps you pure. It keeps yeah. you because <laughs> you can't get a virgin nowadays, at least at an appropriate age. That's not. It's disgusting. it's if if you haven't done the thing where they get you, you they got to take like six six to eight vials. Like when you turn forty. You gotta do you that. that. You gotta. No, I feel like that's. You gotta dangerous. do it. They can't. Wouldn't you pass out? Like, isn't that same as taking well, blood? How, how, how much? How much blood is in a vial? No, it's not that much. You're not gonna pass out from a little vial. Yeah, can't like, you? You could. You could lose like what is it? Like four or five pounds of. Yeah, blood, you could. You could. You could lose a lot. Okay. Yeah, but uh, 
I I pass out just because I'm I'm a wuss when it comes to that stuff. So how it's, much can you? It's, so fourteen percent, fourteen percent amount of blood. So how much blood is in the human body? Yeah, they usually like if I do if my do, if my doctor wants the full medical like evaluation, it's like six to eight vials. It's it's a lot. Oh god damn it! We have one point five gallons. I don't know what that means. One point two to one point five. You know, when you That's pee not... blood, you lose, you lose <laughs> a little bit, you know. Gallons. Yeah. Anyways, this 14, is off You can lose 14% specialty. of that, huh? Yeah. The point is, I'll talk about it later in the soapbox. You is awesome. It, it's pretty fun. Uh, I know I'm late to the party, but uh, on the plus side, I, they have announced that a, a fourth season is coming. So mm-hmm. okay. I, won't, I won't be cool. late to the party on cool, that cool. Uh, when the After the first season, it, the first season, actually, it was a Lifetime original. And then uh, I guess when they got renewed, like Lifetime's like, we can't afford this show. And so Netflix just went in and bought it. And then the first thing they did is they added Victoria Pedretti from both house, uh, uh, the both haunting shows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, she's like the, you know, she's like the best character on those haunting shows. Is that why she's not in the newer one? No. Uh, did they just this, change format on the new one? This is, this is older. Oh, you mean, you, you mean the newer one as in like the, the, as, as in uh, what was it? Not not Bly Manor, the one after Bly Manor. That the one that wasn't a haunting one, the vampire one. You're talking yeah, about yeah, the vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not in that. I, she's maybe she's just in the haunting ones. Who knows? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Any, her contract. Anyway, she's phenomenal, and she makes the whole show so much better. And so she's in the second and third season of that show. I'll talk more about it later. I want to sell you on the show. Okay. But yeah. anyways, why don't we? I don't know check in on what's going on in the news this week let's do it i almost hit the intro button (laughs) (laughs) okay you got three more chances to mess up so we're good to go speaking of intro this man's making his intro into the MCU. Deadpool 3 is uh set to be directed by Sean Levy. He's yeah. like he's like Ryan Reynolds' best friend now, dude. Yeah, they're buddies. They did oh, wow. the Free Guy. They, they have the Adam Project movie on Netflix. Adam Project today. just came out today. Came out today. Yeah. And yeah, now they're going to do Deadpool 3. Interesting. Okay. Um, he seems like a like the the B-tier movie king, right? I don't know about the Adam Project. I don't think Free Guy was a B tier movie I thought at Free all. Guy was B. You're saying Free Guy is an A A tier movie? Free well, Guy? Are we saying for, production free, value? Or yeah. What do you, yeah? What are you saying by terms B-tier of quality? A-tier? Quality. Mm-hmm. I think Free Guy was a was definitely a. a, a okay, quality is weird. Are we talking about quality as in Oscar worthy Spielberg movies, Just or are we talking about me, blockbuster movies that make make a lot quality. of money? Uh, well, I mean, was, I, think I think it was quality. Popular. I think it was quality. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't say think it was, was it great. No, was it Citizen Kane? Hell no. But I mean, it was it was good. Like a I young Michael I, Bay. I, I don't know. know. I don't know if he's Michael a young B. Michael Bay. Something I, to be directed. I thought Free Guy had more heart than any movie Michael Bay's ever done. Hmm. The man knows how to take a script and make it look cool, and so, throw Ryan Reynolds so, in it. So is wait, this is this Sean Levy? Is he related to like Eugene Levy and and, and the yeah, other Levy and and, and Twyla and fucking Twyla? I don't I don't know. Twyla. Maybe. Oh yeah, Twyla is. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twyla's related. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm excited. That's so, so weird that the Deadpool franchise has gotten a different director each time. But I mean, I guess you know he's pretty happy working with this guy now, and so. I'll check out the Adam Project at some point, but I wasn't going to watch it today. Keeps it fresh. It worked yeah, for Star it. Wars, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say as far as quality, it's 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 not just about like uh, entertainment. It's about like what kind of uh, what kind of stars can you pull, and the Sean Levy, Ryan Reynolds movies can pull in stars, dude. It's pretty impressive. And and like you said, like uh, when we were talking about the Joker uh, a couple years back. Like that's a quality movie. Is it does is it gonna resonate or is it gonna entertain a lot of people? Yeah, well, yeah, but is it gonna off put a bunch of people? Yes, definitely yes. Yeah. And like uh, free, it's, it's 
yeah. free guy can be off putting to to the right person, probably to the Joker going crowd. Actually, now that I yeah. think about it, <laughs> it's, it sounds to me like Ricky doesn't like free guy. I don't like free guy. Yeah, there you now, go. Okay. When it comes when it comes to would you say free guy is the soup of movies or would you say like it's a it's it is a nice a fucking soup. It's just a it's bunch a of soup. random IPs thrown to fucking together in in a loosely tied together story. Damn, but it's fun. About? It was fun. It was fun. I'm not gonna. What about Wreck-It, Wreck-It I, Ralph? How do you feel? I about thought it? I thought the story was actually really good for Free Guy. I thought the execution was not Wreck-It necessarily Ralph the best. A far better story than Free Guy. I fall asleep every time I watch a Wreck-It Ralph movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every different time. Different strokes for different different soups yes. for different people. Sounds like it. Yeah, different soups. Yes. Different IP soups. All right, right move moving on. Moving on. Move it along. Some more MCU news. Um, hey Frank, you like that Batman score? I did. I listen well, to it all the time now. That dude's gonna direct <laughs> the Werewolf by Night. Um, Marco, <laughs> is it Giacchino? I don't know how to pronounce it, man. Michael Gia- Giacchino is what I say. Pardon G- if I I yeah. the name, but he's gonna be directing the Werewolf by Night uh, Halloween special coming later this uh, fall. Everybody thought it was gonna come out last year. It is yeah. not. That's interesting. Um. I, can't, I don't know I about think, him directing. I don't know what his I, vision's like. I think I think this kind of bleeds into the conversation we're going to have later. But like, uh, I, I'll give a tease. The director of a uh, Barb Wire <laughs> was <laughs> was previously not a movie director, and after Barb Wire, no. he was not he was not a movie director again. <laughs> <laughs> he continued to not be well, a movie I mean, director. He's yeah, in, he's in good. It's not like he's. When you're directing some for the MCU, you got help, right? Yeah, no, for you sure. All, and all I think this is just show, this is just well, showing how much help you get. He, really. he was second unit director for Batman Forever. That's that's yeah. not nothing. That that's yeah, but that's not that's not his movie that he directed. He's he, and sorry, just to be clear, he was not second unit director. He was second unit stunt director. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, he, he was the one that ensured that no nipples were on uh, Tommy Lee Jones's suit. That's his only contribution to the movie, I'm assuming. All right. Yay for Michael Giacchino, or however you pronounce his name. Well, I'll judge his mm-hmm. directing when this thing comes out uh, in 20 years. It, who's he going to get to do the the music? Is it going to be like Michael Bay or... Uh... <laughs> See yeah, that that would be cool if he, also, if he also did the music and he like he, Sean he wrote the, the whole thing. <laughs> oh god! If he wrote the whole thing with his music in mind, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when yeah, when yeah. somebody when somebody can compose and direct, it's a very I, powerful. I wonder thing. What, what do you? How long do you think this is gonna be? Half hour? Hour? I don't know. If it's it's the debut of a brand new character, uh, mm-hmm. potentially. But so they're, not, they're I, specifically not calling it like a movie. They're calling it like a special. Yeah, well, because it's, it's probably less you know, than less than two hours. I think, or less, less than, than an hour hours. and a half. It, less than an hour and a half, probably. It yeah. would have to be more than a half and less than an hour. I think. Yeah, that's, I'm with Frank on that one. Yeah, with the, I would guess it, an hour and a half would be like a movie. I would guess no more than an hour. No more than an hour. Yeah, yeah. no yeah, more I I than an hour. Yeah. Speaking uh, of hours, Miss Marvel. <laughs> uh this one's actually kind of funky. So, at a uh, Disney. Uh, shareholder or investor meeting uh disney ceo he didn't give a date but he basically said miss marvel is the next show that's gonna come out after moon Knight. Mm-hmm. but the internet as always uh, <clears throat> remains undefeated and there is uh the committee that blocks off the street uh what at the not hollywood boulevard but wherever they do the premieres um through documents found through there it's it's uh pretty clear that miss marvel is gonna be coming in uh june Mm. Or at least the premiere is going to be in the beginning of June. Um, so that would lead to that the show is going to debut probably like a week after that. Yeah. I mean, they like to have some some show that, that basically takes over the summer, right? Like that's mm-hmm. like it's a good spot to have to have uh, something in there. And, and I think we have a pretty empty slate right now for that that time period. So uh, I'll be adding those to the calendar soon. <laughs> uh, and then hopefully if this slots into the summer, then hopefully we'll be seeing a she hulk in the uh, fall i think right? we will be mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Be cool and what what was the the christmas show what was the christmas oh the, Guardian. the guardians christmas? guardians Guardi- christmas right. okay is that this year that is this yeah. year yeah yeah yep. what's oh, not this, this year <laughs> yeah but what's not this year <laughs> oh man 
what, what, what do you think happened here? Well, I'll let you say the news, and then I, I got okay, a question. So I got a question I want to ask. Shake up at Warner Brothers with their date. Um, just to put it, basically, Aquaman and the Flash are all getting pushed to next year, and they are shifting around the release of Black Adam and Shazam two to kind of coordinate with the fall. Well, they so, they push them. They push yeah. them. So DC no, and you miss DC Super Pets also. Yeah, DC Super Pets. Mm-hmm. All of them got pushed to basically the time the the release dates that that the pre the the later movies would have had. Mm-hmm. So DC Super Pets got Black Adam's actual release date. Black Adam is now in October ish, um, and then yes. and then uh, Shazam is taking December twelfth. Shazam uh, two is taking December twelfth, which was the spot for Aquaman, and then. The other two, the Flash and 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 uh, uh, Aquaman, have been moved to March and July, I think, or June, something like that. March and June. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so far for of next year. Yeah. So, yeah, Ricky, let me let me ask you this: Do you think that this, this was because of uh, DC's typical thing that they do? WB DC's typical thing that they do, where they're like, "Oh my God, this grounded, dark and gritty movie was popular. Time to make everything dark and gritty now." Everything we got to reshoot dark uh, and gritty. I don't. I don't think so. I think they're doing the opposite of that. Yeah. Really, really. You think they're going yeah. the, the peacemaker? Uh... Well, ba- based on that article you shared the other day, I think their new directive is to uh, mm-hmm. to just allow the the creators, the filmmakers, to actually yeah realize their creative vision. Rather James Wan than... has already come out, and he's a director of Aquaman, basically saying that movie's not done, and they need more time. And that but, yeah. If but but at, but at this value. point, the, they, mm-hmm. they should be all in, basically in the can by now, right? So why they've, they they've said uh, COVID related production delays? I think that, that's the official. Recorded. You have that's more the official to lose one, yeah. On Aquaman and the Flash, if they're not, I don't yeah. say perfect, but if those aren't aren't hitters, you're you're in a lot of trouble. Versus Shazam, I think yeah. if Shazam tanks or maintains course. You know, I don't I don't think the whole main ship of the DCE is going to swing one way or another. You know what I mean? Well, mm. I think it's also scale, too. Right. Like, mm. I think I think let's be honest, uh, love or hate Aquaman. The scale of it was huge. Right. It was an epic movie. Like there was a lot of characters, a lot oh, of actors. You're talking about it. the first one with. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. The first one. Yeah. You're talking so... about the, the vehicle for Tamara Morrison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I'm saying is uh, that one's huge. We already have seen a brief tease of Black Adam. There's a lot of people in that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shazam, even the first movie, it felt very small, and that's what was kind of made it special, right? It was a very small list of of actors that were involved in that story. Uh, very small sets, and just everything. It was really personal. Tight. So I think They're not grounded, but personal yeah, story. personal uh, gra- story. grounded stakes. I would say. Yeah, so I think from a production standpoint, it would be harder for COVID to to negatively impact the Shazam show. And I think that's why they moved it up is because it was probably easier to keep that small crew on a on a tight leash. Whereas like you just have so many casts of, you know, hundreds and and and, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, everybody behind the camera for those other two movies. I could see it. I could see it. And even if it's not. Even if it's already done filming, mm-hmm. you can still have production delays because of COVID, you know, like just because. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, people doing like 3D or something right? or whatever. So, yeah. What's up? You're still getting Batgirl this year, right? Uh, I no, I think I think Batgirl is probably going to push because isn't it tied into the Flash? It's tied into the Flash. Yeah, she's a main character from what I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Well, DCEU uh, news always always exciting here on the Mostly Marvel Show. <laughs> and it's a little last I, bit for I, Frank. Hey, I updated, I updated our, cal- our calendars, by the way, because of all that. There it is. There Our it is. Loki is getting a Marvel Unlimited Infinity comic. Oh, cool. Um, oh, to read one okay. of those. He's already out. If, I've uh, seen the clickbait, and it made it seem like he was getting his own spinoff series, like TV series, the clickbait no, articles. No, no, it's, 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 it's okay. an Infinity comic. That which, makes If you haven't checked sense. them out, super cool. It's uh, built for phones. It's makes built it for short attention span people. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's why I like them. <laughs> and that's yeah. the news. And that's all I got. Is, is there a button on those that lets you check your Facebook real quick while you're reading, yeah. and then like mm-hmm. you forget, yeah. and then you'll yeah. get perfect good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the comics are about five seconds long. It are they really? Are they really that short? They're uh, super they're pretty short. short. Yeah. 
That's there, funny. That's cool. It's just it's, it's one continuous it's, scroll up. It's not it. It doesn't change pages. Oh, it's not pages. You don't you don't no. swipe, you just, swipe you right. Scroll, for you just scroll pages. up until it, you're done reading it. And it's done. It's it's like good for one poop. It's good for one no. poop. It's, well, wait, you wait, have wait. you have incredibly fast poops. Sir. Are we talking about the morning poop after coffee? The after coffee poop, or are you talking about the aftershock poop that you may or may not do in it's the afternoon? The work for, poop for when me. You have to poop, mm-hmm. but you can't take up too much time. You okay, can okay. Definitely squeeze an infinity. For me, a, 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 one of those is good for one p. Okay. One p. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wait, but you hold water pretty well. I pee like a. I got a bladder like a hamster, so I pee like just. I get I get one one atom in me, and I got to go pee it out real quick. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. But I meant like the morning pee. Oh, the morning pee. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. And my cat likes to sit on my bladder every morning too to exacerbate everything. She punishes me. This is you can't get this anywhere else. This is what makes us yeah. unique. <laughs> this is why you come watch Dan Excelsior, the mostly Marvel podcast. We talked about Marvel. We did. We just spent. A yeah, we talked about Marvel movie. once, and what? so we're going to talk about peeing and stuff, and cats and, and all that. You know? Yeah, that's basically that's Marvel. Happen. They pee in the Marvel universe. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah they do. Wait, do yeah. they? Ghost Rider did. Ghost Rider peed, peed. twice. A total of twice. I thought it was hilarious, uh, Ricky. You shared a couple weeks ago that article about like it was an interview with Steven Soderbergh, and he was complaining that nobody nobody bones in the Marvel universe, and I'm mm-hmm. like, um. Uh, well, they go, watch you, sorry. Go, watch, go, yeah. sorry, in, yeah. go watch Eternals. Sorry. Sorry. Go watch Eternals. Go watch Eternals. The one boning. Well, Tony Stark bones in Iron Man. Yeah, he bones. Yeah. yeah he does. In the very the very first movie, he bones, man. Yeah. What's this guy's problem? He should go sit with Scorsese. Go sit with Emmerich and Scorsese. They're they're over there fuming somewhere. Yeah. Stupid Emmerich. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they don't cancel their Patreon subscriptions. They're really stalwart followers of our show. I know. So, yeah. I wish. I wish they've been late on their payments, and that's the problem. That's yeah, why I'm. See. That's why I'm calling them out right now. Because yeah, because we keep calling them out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's so. That's all the news. I tried to stretch the news. news a little yeah. Bit. Uh, in, in toy news, by the way, the uh, Walgreens finally has been um, selling their uh, their exclusives from last year, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, one basically once a one every week so uh like a weekend ago it was the quasar and then this weekend it was the binary and then um just today they they finally got the um the baron zemo up that they promised uh it would be the first exclusive of this year so that's already ready to go i saw they, um, they showed off that ultron they did they showed off the ultron uh infinity figure uh so they got they're they're having a lot of uh youtubers we saw that last show off the, week right yeah they they showed a picture of it but they they've actually been sending out a lot of uh preview toys to uh streamer live streamers oh, or youtubers oh. was it like and the so, one where they where they did the compound hulk hulk yeah yeah so or they composite, so they, composite, hulk? composite hulk so they sent somebody the uh the ultron so they could review it and i think along with some other figures and stuff yeah the Hawkeyes, cool. the two Hawkeyes. Yeah. Was it was it the same uh, reviewers this time, or was it uh, they reviewers? they got they're just going through a lot of them. So Dennis cool. didn't yeah. get any. I yeah, did any. you get your? Did they lose your invited well, mail? I'm gonna be honest. I think the 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 limiting factor here is I have yet to put up an address to to contact this show. No, uh, or any no. show I, i'll give uh, everyone your home address i think that's about yeah one. that's probably why i haven't done it yet <laughs> okay cool i will make copies of keys <laughs> and just hand those out yeah 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 there's the, can I do it? just uh, every all right i i always i always lose the key that you gave me to your place and I always find it like a week later in like the most random spots. I'm like, I should probably put this in a safe spot. <laughs> you probably, like a p- public restroom sink. Like you, you just probably, it right there. You should probably just give it back since you don't live in the city anymore. You know, I, you never know when I need to go in there. True. And just in case, you should write his address down, like engrave yeah. it on the key itself. I've, I've watched a little too much of you this week. Give me back my key. Give me back <laughs> my key. <laughs> So g- give us the synopsis on you. Oh wait, wait, wait. No, no, let's focus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. That's that's soapbox we, material. That's soapbox. We can focus I, on a game. Yeah, I thought it. we could we could do it. Yeah, let's do it. So the game I, I was building. Oh yeah, yeah. Go go ahead and do the. Okay, so the game I was building was kind of a became a bust, but it's something that I'm going to use later. I'm not as I'm not as smart as I think I am. Is the problem. Um, which is a low bar because I don't think I'm very smart anyway. But 
here is what we're going to do instead. I'm just going to, we're going to do it live as they say in TV. And uh, please be sure to let the audience know how they can participate. You can participate by just supporting us. Go ahead and uh, smash that like button. <laughs> no, no, you can participate by shouting out answers in the chat. Uh, feel free to answer if we don't know it. We might get stumped. I don't know. So what I did was I, I looked up impossible to get 100% on Marvel quizzes. And we're just going to do it. We're, we're going we're gonna to team up. We're all going to form up to be Nerd Voltron and see if we can uh, okay. get the 100%. Okay. So you don't know the answers either. I don't know the answers either. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm going to team up as this a, as a, first low, time the, the as a lowly question answerer, like as a, as a peon, as a, as a villager, as a serf, as a wow. peasant. I don't think we're supposed to tell them that's what we think of them. Oh no, I mean, yeah, I meant you guys, but no, okay. but they can join us too. They can they can lower themselves to us. A plebe. <laughs> a plebe. Uh, okay. Here's the first one. So I've got a couple of them queued up. So if this ends up tanking and it's it's stupid, we can free cut, advertisement cut for the thicker, one. fuller hair over yeah, there. Yeah, this is this is our new uh, that's our new sponsor, thicker, fuller hair. As shown by me, who has uh, not a five head. I've I've surpassed. I've gone to a six head now at this point in my life. Um, so let's begin the game. Okay. It's, it's impossible to get a hundred percent on this hardcore Marvel cinematic universe quiz. Okay. By Joe Robertson. Who is Scott Lang's daughter? Cassie. Cassie. Yeah. Cassie. I can't even read this. It's so small, but I just knew the answer. They're softballing it. That's why I'm reading it out loud. And also okay. for our friends on, uh, for our friends on Podbean. Sorry. Nate, this time you get to read all the answers before I even jump in and say what. Okay, that sounds good. Or we could just shout out the answers. It's no big deal. Who said it? I have lived most of my life surrounded by my enemies. I would be grateful to die surrounded by my friends. Ooh. What are the answers? I can't Gamora, see Rocket, Yondu, Drax. Drax. Hmm. That's the Drax. Think it's Drax. I think 100%. it's a Drax thing. I think it's a Drax thing. All right, Rocking group, in. Or it's, group either thinking Drax, it. it's either Drax or Yonda. Oh, oh yeah. wrong! It was Gamora. It was Gamora. Huh? Oh, that's it. We didn't get 100. percent Time to cut when, it. We're going to the next quiz. That? Ah, who knows? Probably who knows? an Endgame. Oh man, this quiz is great. How many Infinity Stones are there? Answer six. <laughs> it just it just says the answer. It doesn't give us any choices. Man, Wait, I, you switched to a different game. Yeah, we, no, we lost. We didn't get 100. percent That's it. Oh, it's game over. This is this this is Elden Ring. This isn't. <laughs> oh man, we're doing roguelike trivia right now. Yeah, we're doing oh roguelike trivia, son. Oh, this is rough. You know what they should do in Elden Ring? Uh, they should have a feature where you play it and it'll uninstall the game when you die, and then you have to take the time to reinstall the game and pick. No, you have to or... buy a new copy of the game. Oh, that'd be even better too. That'd be way better. All right, this one is not a good trivia. It says, where's Captain America from? Answer, Brooklyn. It just says the answers right there. Man, this well, is a... This I don't, is maybe not a trivia game. This is just giving you trivia then. Yeah. Just, Why does it say it's impossible then? This one's very it's possible. impossible to lose. This, this is very possible here. All right. Okay. Next one. Who helps Tony Stark escape the cave in the first film? Obadiah Stane. James Rhodes. Ho Yinsen, Harley Keener. I mean, you could argue that Harley was always in his mind and heart, but it, it's probably Ho Yinsen. Yes. All right. Oh, oh, we got it right. Ho Yinsen, thank you for saving my life. Don't waste it. Don't waste your life. What was Captain America's elite unit known as? The Howling Commandos, the Star Spangled Men, the Star Spangled Commandos, the Iron Patriots. I like all four answers, but it's the Howling Commandos. Ricky, do you agree? Men's pretty good, but it is the Howling Commandos. All right. Yep, the Howling Commandos. We got it Which right. Which is awkward because that was actually Nick Fury's unit. Uh, yeah, big in the, time. In the, yeah. Comics, in the comics. Yeah, but, uh, they had the same names of the the characters, but like they didn't use any of their special attributes. Like Percy, what was the name Percival Pinkerton's umbrellas or whatever? He had like penguin hey, umbrellas or something? Dugan had the hat. That's all I needed. Is that all you cared about? All right. Yeah, and the mustache. And the mustache. He did look the part. I think that's yeah. the best. Um, I think that and Damian Dark are the characters I like that guy. I, I forget his character name, but he, he's in he's yeah. in everything. Why is he in uh, everything? Yeah, it's something Donahue, like his last name or McDon McDonahue like or something McDonough like that. Dugan McDonahue, Dono, no. <laughs> Neil, 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 Mc Neil, Neil McDonahue, Neil Mc Neil Donahue or something like that. Yeah. 
Neil he's really good. Like he's a good actress. Actor, 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 actor. What were Thor's last words to Loki? Loki, do not give him the Tesseract. You are the worst. You really are the worst, brother. If you were here, I might even give you a hug. Well, maybe you're not so bad after all, brother. You really are the worst, brother. You really are the worst, brother? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's his last words to him. Okay. Wait, no. Oh, wait, wait. No, 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 no. He, it might be actually. Sure. I'll go with it. Man, that's I'll some cold blooded shit to say to, to someone. I don't remember what his <laughs> last words is. I was already phased out by this. Well, cause time. his, cause his neck gets snapped. It's like at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. You were yeah. phased out at the beginning of the movie. I think I was, I think it really had to, the beginning of Marvel movies really have to sell themselves to me. Like it, and we're talking like five, ten minutes tops. This is when you know, this happens. And they in, really in have to war. It's not until like in, in Avengers movies. Typically, I get into them maybe at the twenty minute mark. This is after the Hulk and Thanos have already fought. We we've, we've had these conversations before where I say some weird thing like that, and you guys like try to tell me why the first fifteen minutes of a movie are good. And oh, I didn't not. say they're good. I'm just like they're loud, so I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Got a lot, a lot of color in those. those I, I can sleep in a lot of averse, you know, loudness okay. or whatever. So, okay, so you really are the worst, brother. You really are the worst, brother. I, I think it might yep. be. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's sad. That's you sad. really are the worst, brother. That's tragic. I, I, where does he put the emphasis on? You really are the worst, brother. Or you really, you really are the worst, are the brother. Worst brother. You really are the worst, brother. Brother. Uh, but you know, like brother. it's a, it's a very. Yeah, he's gonna quick be playing death. Hulk Hogan, right? It's, What's up? He's going to be playing Hulk Hogan. Uh, Tom Hiddleston is Hulk Hogan, huh? That's, oh, That's we cool. broke. We scooped no. it here. Yes. We, we scooped it here. Scoop you, right you heard here. it here, folks. Sure. I can see that movie. We're pretty current. Mm -hmm. Next question. What planet does Hulk reach after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron? Xandar, Asgard, Nowhere, Sakaar. Well, it's Sakaar, but Nowhere's not even a planet. So Isn't weird. that a head? It's a head of a celestial, mm -hmm. yeah. What is the name of Black Widow's father? James, Ivan, Anton, Jim. Ivan, mm. right? I feel no. like Ivan, but I don't want to be. Maybe it's Anton. Oh. Hold on. Oh, wait, her father? Like name of Black Widow's father. I'm the confused. Red Guardian? Are we? Is it? Because the Red Guardian's Alexi. Yeah, mm. but he's not her father. Uh, who is her father? He was Man? her father, but he wasn't her daddy. <laughs> uh, I want Anton. I I'm going Anton. You're going Anton. I'm thinking mm -hmm. Ivan. I'll go Anton though. If uh, if Dennis, you're the deciding vote. It's definitely we're we're, we're, we're definitely lose. We got to restart. <laughs> we're definitely saying not James and not Jim, right? Yeah, I don't know, uh, but it's probably a Romanoff last name. So let's go with Anton. Anton Romanoff? I don't know. I, I don't Ivan feel good Romanoff? about it. Ivan I don't Romanoff? feel I don't feel good about it, but just do it. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Dennis is the deciding vote here. Let's do it. Oh, it was Ivan. No, yeah. Natasha, daughter uh, of Ivan. The Red School said it, right? No, I didn't. Daughter I didn't. of Ivan. Yeah. Got you're right. No, these are impossible. They weren't they weren't kidding. I oh, forgot play quiz. that. Oh, this is a pretty good one. Look at that. It says enter answer, but it doesn't it doesn't populate a question. Oh, wait. Can you answer the impossible MCU questions? Yes. I'm going to answer oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, it's not. It doesn't let me enter. This is worse than the game that I built right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> next one. Next one. That is look impossible. Those, look at all those ads. Oh, God, Frank. That was impossible to get those right. All right. What, this, is the last, this is the last quiz we'll be able to do. What is the legislation required? What is, what is the legislation required? What legislation required the Avengers to be governed by law? Sokovia Berlin Accords. Accords. Sokovia Accords is correct. Oh, we got yeah. it. Yeah. Whose serum was Dr. Banner trying to replicate when he turned into the Hulk? Dr. Reed Richards, Dr. Zander Rice, William Stryker, or Abraham Erskine? Erskine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the Iron Man suit actually made up of? Gold titanium alloy. A vibranium adamantium alloy. Uru Prometheum. Gold, sure titanium. It's gold, gold titanium, right? Yeah, right. Yep. Yes, it is. 
What is the name of the unit Captain America fights in? I'm just going to skip past that. That's all in command. Oh, man. We got it. We got it. We got this thing on lock. Okay. We're, we're on pace to win. The Thanos that attacked Earth in Endgame, which year did he come from? 2012, 2017, 2022, 2014. It's 2012. I want to say 2014. 2014. Wait, what was the answer? I thought he came from the Avengers Avengers timeline. The 12, no, 14, no, 14. he comes from he comes from fourteen. Yeah. Oh, because he's Guardians timeline. Yeah. 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 He's okay. Twenty fourteen. It is. Oh, 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 how long did Scott Lang actually spend in the quantum realm? Five years. Five days. Five hours. Five weeks. Five years. Five no, years. No, 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 oh, no, 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 we lost. Why did, oh, why did no. you why did you just go with Ricky? I went with I was Ricky, your, Ricky. I was here saying no, no, no. Rick, oh, well. Ricky sounded Ricky sounded like he uh he oh wait, I, I, I just read the, understood the question. It's how long I, he was, I trusted he, Ricky. That's how long was he actually oh, okay, yeah. Five minutes. All... <laughs> yeah. Uh it's not no. we, we can debate it's, actually it's, I'll, it's I'll more, send a it's letter. Five, it's more than five minutes, but I'll send a letter to the person that made that quiz and be like, he actually, that's a very dubious question. And I demand that question removed. And I want our yeah, score, re our original score board. reinstated. Yeah. It's it's more than five minutes because the van gets impounded. Right. And it's, it's not till the, the rat, the rat turns the, the machine back on. Well, that, that was the five years in the real world. Yeah. That was right? five, yeah. I, I think what they're asking and uh, they're asking incorrectly is how long did Scott Lang, feel like he was trapped or something like that i don't know that it's got to be from his perspective the question has to be from oh uh, gotcha they okay. asked how long was he actually in the quantum realm is that right it was a, it was a few hours right yeah i want to say it was like a couple hours because because he was super distraught when he came out like into his, his and, twilight and he zone looked, world and he looked exactly the same as he did years ago yeah as he did when he was in romeo and juliet with baz lerman yeah <laughs> wait is he in that yeah he's paris oh, nice yeah I'm gonna rewatch that. Heck yeah! You want to make that official? We'll watch that for our next movie uh, no, next week. No, that's no, that. No. We know that's not our official movie next yeah. week. Yeah, and we'll All talk right. about that later. That that'll keep viewers invested. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we'll tell you later what we're gonna talk about next week. But we right now, hold it I think over it's, them. One, first off, thank you, Frank, for farming all of those ridiculous commercials <laughs> and giving all of those those websites <laughs> free advertisement because that was a lot of ads to click on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, second, I think let's do this. Let's talk about the thing that we we all agreed somehow last week that we were going to do and talk about this week. Let's do it, Ricky. All right. I feel like, you know, the my favorite part about this show is at the end of the day, regardless of who's watching, we're having fun. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided last week that we needed something to, to fill in the blanks here while we wait for Moon Knight to arrive at the end of the month. And we just kind of collectively agreed that we should watch Barbed Wire. And, you know, if you're if you're wondering how that's relevant, Pam and Tommy's been in the news. It finally ended uh, this week. And we're just like, you know. Let's throw let's throw Pamela a little love because she's not very happy with that show. So I had to give her some money to rent to rent the barbed wire. I bought this it. Week. Frankly, you, you, bought, you bought it. Bought it. You bought the movie. I, I, rent, huh? I rented it. Sorry, I rented it. Oh, okay. 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 Frank, you I, bought it though. I was trying to buy it, but my wife was all like, "I'm we're not paying fifty dollars for that." And I'm all like, "But it's my money." And it ends as it turns out because I'm married, it's not my money. Oh, so. Okay. So we ended up we ended up renting it. Well, there you go. If you're watching, uh, Miss Pamela Anderson, we uh, we all three rented it, and anybody who is fans of our show may have also done that as well. So hope that helps. Uh, but yeah, we are putting the spotlight today on Barb Wire from 1996. It was Pamela Anderson's big movie. Uh, it was supposed to launch her career after Baywatch. Uh, it didn't necessarily do that. Uh, but you know, uh, for Ricky and I, this is actually our first time watching it. Uh, I kind of dodged that bullet, uh, in, in 1996 and the, uh, subsequent, you know, couple of years that came after that. But yeah, um, I'm not going to warn anybody who's watching us, uh, about spoiler warnings. Cause I mean, 
I think you had time to watch this, uh, and uh, we're just going to get into it. But yeah, for anybody who's interested, the quick summary I found on this one was um, during the Second American Civil War in 2017, Barb Wire owns a nightclub called The Hammerhead. Things become complicated when her ex-lover, Axel Hood, who is married to the fugitive Karina Devonshire, re-enters her life. Man, that summary says everything about this movie. <laughs> like, but Man, you picked like the worst summary to Okay, oh, I want what? let me hear your summary. Let me hear your summary. Give me the summary. Okay. Uh a nightclub owner in uh was it Liberty City? Hold on one sec. Give me give me one second. Steel City, Steel, right? Steel, 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 Steel City. Steel, no, not Steel City. Steel something or other. Fort Steel or something like that. I'm already effing this. Steel Harbor. Steel Harbor. Steel, Steel Harbor. Harbor. Yeah. A nightclub owner in Steel Harbor discovers her old flame in a town with their significant other. Uh, and <laughs> their friend so rebel. This is so bad. With, with enemies on their tail. And only, only barbed wire can get them out of the country. It's uh, way more concise. Actually, no, that uh, was... That, that was, was actually, pretty horrible. That was the well. That was the synopsis for Casablanca, oh, and I think I think it worked really you're well. Trying. For this. Mm -hmm. You're trying. I was. Doing I, uh, we'll, we'll take okay. take me back to 1996. Frank, go for it. Do Frank. you want to go there? Did you see this movie in theaters? I did. Yeah. You know, it was, what was really funny. Like, mm -hmm. so I used to watch a lot of horror movies because they were always they were always really boob heavy, and I think this movie was great because it was pretty boob heavy, but. I had a friend that didn't like it. He's all like, I hate it. He's always too boob heavy. He's all, I'm a fan of boobs, but this movie had too much of it. This is too much. I didn't like it. And that's why he didn't like it. That's, that's the reason he didn't like it. It wasn't like Tamar Morrison. It wasn't her wooden acting. It wasn't, you know, a weird uh, plot or weird like line deliveries. Boob heavy. I, I, I will say it's, it's, it's definitely quite exploitative. Like it's, it's it, very gratuitous. It, it, it's gratuitous. Like the like it it's a lot of scenes that you're like, huh, that's a weird place to have your boobs. But <laughs> sure. okay, if that's what you choose to do, you know, like but, th but that is what the character is. She's like a tank girl in that she's kind of like uh she's uh how can I put it like uh not sexually wild, but like she she's really confident in her sexuality. Well, yes. Yeah. I think that's she's, she's male, of, male gazy. I think male gazy right, is the word. If we, we if we can pause this for a second, where Ricky sure. was asking, and I think let's let's rewind it a little further back because Frank, you have more context than any of us already. Yeah, because you read you read Barbara, right? You read the yeah, comic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, she had she had a series for like I think a year or two, and then they did kind of like the mask where they broke into like mini series, like sporadically, and. uh yeah, the, I think the miniseries were a lot stronger than because they were more concise of a story. And uh, this one actually has all the pieces of the comic book, but it doesn't like they, they didn't have faith. They didn't have faith that we would be able to to enjoy it. But I think with all the weirdness of this thing, I think we can accept like an alien invasion. So an alien invasion is what causes the like kind of the decline of uh, civilization as we know it. Mm -hmm. And uh that that's what causes like the war and stuff like that. So it's not, I think it was a civil war. It was yeah. like the second civil war that Cause, they cause, discussed. Yeah. Cause what I read, I read that the plot of, of this is like, or, or, or sorry, the, the, the setting of this movie, you know, it takes place in a possible future as opposed oh, to the, no, com the, the it's comic actually, takes, yeah. the, the comic takes place in an alternate version of present day earth. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Right? And then this is a positive, this is a, Plausible, possible, possible future. future, but yeah, but they they kind of took liberties with the characters, but the characters are still they still kind of act like their characters. Like for instance, her brother is like a blind kind of drunk, um, but right. he's like he's like in the comic book he's a gadgeteer and he's responsible for making like all all her gadgets and stuff. He's like a tech mm -hmm. genius, and uh, there's she also has like a, a cyborg like a, she <laughs> yeah, pretty much he's he's like a Q I guess. Um, and her, she has a, like a cyborg assistant who is that. I forget the what butler? his name in, was. He was his name Curly. In the, Curly yeah, is Curly. the butler or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Curly. Yeah. Curly is Udo. Udo. Udo Kier. Yeah. Yeah. The dude that's in like every movie. Blade. He's from Blade. He's the head vampire. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
he's like a cyborg. He has like a like a metal endoskeleton and like uh, skin over it or whatever in the comic books. So they okay. don't really touch on a lot of things like that. But the characterization is all there, and I appreciate it. And so when I watched the first like half hour of it uh, in the theaters, I was like, oh, this movie, this movie's got boobs. This movie has violence. This movie, like, this is this is gonna check all the boxes. This is this is gonna be a change for comic books. And then like all of a sudden they threw in Casablanca, and I'm like, what the hell just happened with this movie? Like they just yeah. they they took a sharp turn and it was really uh, it's a classic script that you know <laughs> yeah yeah how, how can you mess Man. that up for so, reals so it's funny because uh, to you know full disclosure I've actually never watched Casablanca but when I was watching this movie when it finally got through the sea of exposition to finally tell you what was happening in the the, the story what the central conflict was it was basically you know this 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 King, the congressionals, which were, the, you know, the 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 group of people that had kind of overthrown the U.S. government and were responsible for this new civil war, uh, their plan was to unleash a deadly uh, plague on all of their enemies. Uh, and this plague was developed by uh, Doctor uh, Cora D or Karina Devonshire, right? Doctor Hank and Wuhan. When she realized that. The, uh, you know, what they were going to do with it, she uh, injected herself with the vaccine and her plan was to get across the border to Canada so that they could alert the, the rest of the the global, you know, powers to to help, you know, produce this this uh, vaccine for, for the world and stop this from happening. And when I heard that story, I was like, OK, so they need somebody to protect the, the one human being who has the key inside their blood. This reminded me of like uh, a plot from the plot from like The Last of Us and also like the plot of iZombie in the, the final season of iZombie. It was, it was also it was, uh, I know you didn't watch it, but um, uh, uh, Z Nation also was very similar. Yeah. Off so what? Like, so that's what's weird. It, it ripped off a bunch of or I mean, sorry, it like there's a lot of zombie stories that have a, the same thing going on. And and I feel like honestly, zombies would have made this better. Uh, like I just feel I felt like there was not a lot of stakes going on. There was a pulpiness for... to it that like I don't think made sense, right? It, no, I I like the I like the pulping. I like the style of it. I think uh, I think it was it was pr- fairly well shot, and mm-hmm. I thought the the setting was fairly well done. It's like all Long Beach, yeah, it's fun. yeah, sure, sure. And the, and the characters were fairly fairly well done. I mean, they they, they were mm-hmm. okay. All, all the pieces were in place for it to be something good. I actually but, really liked the first two acts. I thought they were very stylish and very yeah. beautiful. But but there was they were all in the dark with a lot of cool blue lighting, a lot of cool like nightclub uh, atmosphere, yeah, yeah. really cool vibrant colors. And for some reason, they decided to do the third act in broad daylight. And like, yeah. and and it just it was it just fell apart in that third act. And and worst of all, like for me, is the hero Bob Barb Wire had to be saved by Tamara Morrison. And I was Is like, that the worst Ooh. part? That's for me, that was the worst part. I was like, uh wait, wait okay. So let, let's say so if you're you're drowning and the only person that can save you is Tamara Morrison, <laughs> do you choose to reject his hand? Do you do like cliffhanger or something? You just choose to reject his hand? Probably Get this he's all like it, it was, grab my it, hand it, like a band like a benta. It depends. Is he acting? It, is he acting or is he just being a real he, human being? He's acting like he's gonna save you. Hey, nah, maybe then, maybe he's just acting. No thanks. No, if he's acting, it's it's a no go for me. Oh man, uh, poor Tamar Morrison. I just can't, man. I can't. He's just like you know. I that was like probably the first American movie for Tamar Morrison. Actually, I looked at his IMDb. Oh, really? uh, credits and um he, he had done a lot of stuff in new zealand before that um i do question why someone from new zealand was all up in the great american civil war of 2016 or 7, hey, 15 hey, or whatever. you know it's the land of all all people yeah it makes war makes for strange bedfellows and yeah. like everyone was fighting for canadian money also so i know right i didn't what know what that was we were, we were wondering we were like thinking like maple leaves maybe like you got to gather i don't know I did enjoy of, like like sure. I, I'm there with Dennis, so I kind of enjoyed the first. Yeah, I'd say the two, first two, act, two thirds, the first two yeah, thirds. I'll go first third, first third. It's fine. Yeah. It's you know she's yeah. kicking butt. She has guns. She's she's not like a 
she was she was doing it all on her own and it was really cool mm -hmm. and empowering right yeah and like she was very capable in the first two two thirds of that movie and then like next thing you know in the last the back end of it she's like pinned to a car and she's uh uh, she like was she's like exhausted for like 20 minutes and like, but she's not but, but she's she just like it's, but it's like a teacups ride uh, there's not there's nothing actually happening to her there's spinning stuff. there's they're spinning in circles and she's like uh and i would finally, be doing that if i were on the teacups that's that's my reaction when i'm on the teacup ride it doesn't matter then, how fast we're and going then, and then finally her ex-boyfriend jumps in and like and like pulls her up on a crane and frees her and then then she's able to give the badass like uh like Never he's, he's all me, like, babe. He's all, hey, by by the way, you know what my favorite song is, <laughs> and then he's all, I got you, babe. And she's all like, what? Did you call me Blob? And then she she gets all mad and <laughs> wrestles him. Is that from the comics? Like her distaste or for the word yes. babe? I was okay. gonna say too, like so, uh, in the comics, she doesn't like being called babe. And uh, there was a there was a, a, a the mask from um, the you know the Stanley Ipkiss mask type character. Um, th there was a thing called uh, World Tour, and he goes through all the Dark Horse comics. So he visits like Ghost, who's another popular comic, and Barbed Wire, and a couple others. And uh, he calls her Babe. So now, like she she is listed on on if you look at her uh, profile online, um, the mask is listed as one of her enemies, and it's pretty much because he called her Babe one time. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but just just to be clear, like yeah. When I was when I was watching the movie, like there were things that I, I was picking out that I liked really like really early, really quickly. And I think the things that stood out the, to the most to me really fast were the posing. Like, let's be real, like every superhero movie, you has to it has to have posing. Yeah. And she had amazing posing. Like she was doing poses that are straight out of action, like tons of comic books I've seen. Or like they're just ridiculous. They, they were, a, a lot of the shots were straight out of the comic. Yeah, like, dual thought, wielding yeah. pistols while in high heels and crouched yeah. down as low as you could possibly be. It's such a ridiculous looking thing, but I I saw it and I immediately knew that was a comic book panel. Like yeah, without yeah. even ever reading the comic, I could mm -hmm. just feel it. And I really liked that. I liked that that I it made me feel like I was experiencing a, a, a comic book, you know? Um I also really liked the camp because it, it was it was campy in a, in a they, in a they cool leaned way. into it yeah they really did and so i feel like it was it was self-aware but i think what happened was like that director just didn't have the chops that were needed to 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 pull to pull just it off push, it. push it that last yeah bit. yeah that last bit and so uh the other thing i want to point out like uh that gets huge credit is uh, Pamela Anderson's stunt woman in that movie is oh, man. Yeah. so awesome. Riding bikes, kicking, so awesome. Riding shooting. bikes and shooting machine guns at the same time. Dude, is, some is some never, of those kicks were cool. insane. Yeah, like, they were like super good. Um, I was telling I was telling my wife something about that when we were watching it. Is that I'm all like, man, that's sweet. I like that barbed wire has a helmet because it serves two purposes. One, it shows that she's responsible and cares about her own safety, and two. It allows the stunt woman just to not worry about having to look like Pamela Anderson. And there was so much of it. I also yeah. like that Pam Anderson had like this really like sexy, messy hair and to cover most of her face so mm -hmm. that the stunt woman could also continue doing a lot of the work. Yeah, damn, damn um, decent of her, right? Yeah, damn, damn yeah, decent. Yeah. But I will say uh, as, as far as like, you know, appreciating stunt woman versus, you know, the transition from Pam to her, uh, I think one of the things that, that, also hurt besides just you know the director maybe kind of being green in that area like uh is the editing there were times where like it just like yeah. stops the movie i, stops I feel like, like i feel like there were times where the, the the director filmed her giving a lot of different reactions to different moments but then when they got edited together they just all sound like a, rep a repetition so that teacup section where the forklift is spinning her around she must have said uh, like five different times and i'm sure each each individual take probably sounded cool but when it got edited together it's just uh 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 yeah. uh and it sounds like a broken record and i'm like and uh the and editing was, really killed it for me most of the editing around her like was yeah. was really dead and really like 
Kind or of like flat, I guess. Or back and forth between her and the stunt woman. You know, like there sure, was a lot sure. of yeah, yeah. yeah was, there's a lot of was, like cuts. It was like the the first Matrix. It was so it was many like cuts, cuts, so many cuts, and and I get it because uh, yeah, David Hogan, era, though, right? David you... Hogan is actually a music video director. Like that's his mm. thing. He has directed a ton of music videos, tons and tons and tons. And you know, those it's all about you know three minutes, get as many get as many shots as you possibly can in in three minutes. Yeah. And so it makes sense that and that sensibility can actually work really well for big budget stuff. You know, like big actiony stuff. I mean, hell, Michael Bay. You know, like you made a like, career out of it. Yeah, he made a career out of doing that stuff. Um, so, I, what I was going to say to his praise, though, when 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 it was a scene that didn't involve Pamela. Um, I thought, I thought it was shot really well. Like if it was like just the cop or if it was yeah. like, uh, the, the Nazi group or whatever their name was, um, the congressionals, the yeah. congressionals, or if yeah. it were, um, uh, if, if it was just anywhere else or her brother, her brother was shot. Well, yeah, I thought he was, was a cool, pretty good. Thought it was a pretty cool character. Um, he was a bad actor too, but I, I, yeah. I forgave it. I forgave it a lot. Yeah. I, I would say, yeah, there actually were some decent actors in that movie and, Maybe maybe not plural. Um, I think Xander to think about, Ber Xander yeah. Berkeley was the one that was holding that movie down better than anybody. The police chief. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen that guy go on. He's had a very long career. Uh, he's, uh, to my memory, the most recent thing I've seen him in is like uh, several seasons of The Walking Dead. Um, oh yeah, that's but, right. That's right. Yeah, they yeah. had several like uh, like character actors um, that were in the movie also. Like like yeah. I said the. Uh, uh, Clint Howard obviously was in it, and then uh, uh, what was it uh, the 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 head vampire guy and like a couple others here and there. Yeah, there was also the uh, what is the the villain? What was his name? The Colonel. Oh something. yeah, yeah. He he was something too, wasn't he? He man, I got to read this to you because it's so good. Uh, what is it? It's Colonel. Where is his name? Because uh, I'm looking it up right now. Don't worry. Colonel Prizer. Prizer. Steve rails back. Now I want to read this to you. Because, you know, IMDb is hilarious because, you know, you get different people to write your bios for you and stuff. And yeah, I just love this guy's bio so much uh, because he he was the villain of this movie. And this is he I got to believe he had somebody write this for him. <laughs> Noted for his dangerous chameleon like portrayals while oh. possessing the scariest looking pair of eyes in the business. <laughs> Leathery looking Steve Railsback has mesmerized us over the years with a number of weird, often warped role, uh, roles, both on film and television. <laughs> While never achieving the degree of stardom deserved, he, like the equally infamous and unpredictable Dennis Hopper, always <laughs> command interest whether the material is good or inferior. And I love that he paid somebody to like compare him to Dennis Hopper. Yeah, I appreciate that's, that. That's, that's great. That's hilarious. And then it just goes on and on so much more. It lists his entire career in this thing. It's, he was good. It's paragraphs, paragraphs. But you know what? They somehow missed one movie. They didn't mention. What, Ed Gein? Barb Wire. That's funny. <laughs> they never mentioned in his entire bio that he was in the main villain in Barb Wire. They have a paragraph on Ed Gein. <laughs> he, he, he's in a lot of horror movies. And that's why that's why I appreciate yeah. him. Because I recognize him instantly. Um I read somewhere he was also in Supernatural, but like I said, I haven't yeah. seen that, so I don't yeah. really know. That's in his bio too, just but not it, barbed wire. <laughs> I think not Ed Gein was wire. the first time that I noticed him, actually, because that okay. portrayal of Ed Gein was pretty spot on. I've um, never seen that movie, and this is easily the first time I noticed him because I was like, God, I feel like you're really trying, but you're not, I don't know. You're not giving being given something good to work with here. Or something. Say, don't expect he, like he a, a, a nuance acting in that whole movie. Right? No, I That's agree. I agree. Yeah, he he definitely like uh, chewed. I guess you could say he chewed. He he like nibbled at the scenery. I think I would say. Yeah. Like he didn't I, exactly. He wasn't like a like a big personality, but I think he did. He did fa fairly well for like he I, nibbled the scenery. I think that's fine. I definitely felt like the the police chief had more restraint, and he actually like felt like he was he was collaborating with everybody in the scene and so like he was uh, he he felt he felt more real to me as a person in that universe mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. like uh sure. the 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 colonel felt like a cartoon character for sure um, yeah so that's what i was gonna say like when you watch or if you ever watch ed gein don't expect like a nuanced and restrained um in interpretation of that person like 
expect more of the same. Expect more gotcha. of what he's pattern pattern you'd expect from barbed wire. Okay. In, okay. in Ed Gein. All right. And that's that's what makes Thank it a fun you. a fun thing, even though it's really dark. Yeah. But uh, I read that John Paxton is also in the credit. I, I read his his name on the IMDb credits, and I yeah. do not remember. Maybe he plays a character named Paxton. Smooth. Yeah, I don't know. It, like, I think that was another weird thing about this movie is there was a lot of bloat. Like, it was really hard for me to keep track of characters for the first half hour or so because I was like, that middle you're throwing a lot at me. Log, so yeah, uh, I didn't I mind it... the middle. I didn't mind the middle because the middle actually allowed me to understand who the characters were because they just throw a lot at you in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like they just show you uh Tamara Morrison and 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 Cora and With I'm zero like, context. I'm like, I'm like, what is this? Who are these people? And so the middle helped at least answer those questions for me. Yeah. You know what I mean, but like um but I mean Ricky, you were also watching it to try and get through it before we started recording a show. <laughs> that I mean, you have you, you always do this. You always give yourself the the minimum amount of time to do I the mean, assignment. How, what do I what do I need a uh, a day to watch it ahead? Like yeah, sure. I mean, I just like I would watch it and then pause it and 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 and, and slightly rewind sometimes because I was like, did I miss something here? And you know, like I was just like I was giving it room to breathe. So I probably took two hours to watch. I was not analytical day. in my watching a barbed wire. <laughs> no, yeah. nor should you be on your first watch i was trying to give it a fair shake you know like i was trying to give it every every mm-hmm. bit of my attention that it deserved and so um i i honestly did enjoy it a lot for the for the beginning and then uh i think i think the thing that broke my heart the most uh aside from you know axel saving barb at the end was like was, was her ditching uh, the dog she ditched camille <laughs> no it she was gave it to the, the head vampire it was the 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 worst ammo montage I've ever seen because like they did the thing in every action movie where you suddenly see guns getting loaded and clips, get, you know, like guns getting cocked back and a- ammo bandoliers getting strapped on it. She was a she was a freaking armory at the mm-hmm. end, you know, like as they go off to go make the deal. She had so many guns and bullets on her. It was ridiculous. And then she gets there <laughs> and then they're it. like. Yeah, and then she just takes it all off. And I was like, I yeah. have the craziest blue balls from that scene right now because I expected so, <laughs> so many bullets to be shot. Hey, by those all cost these money, guns. man. Yeah, for reals. Uh, I, I liked uh, uh, Steve, Fat Steve Harvey in that scene. That guy was pretty good. <laughs> whoever, whoever that actor is, he's awesome. Uh, uh, Ricky, I know you're able to check this for us, but like, uh, like, she has to be a meme, right? It, Pam Anderson saying, you, you fat son of a bitch has to be a meme at some point, right? Like that's, I don't, I it's don't know. It's just, I don't, I don't feels... think this, 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 this game ever ascend or this, this show ever ascended to, to meme status. I, I think it's funny that you accidentally called it a show. A lot of people, okay. know I, almost about called, no, I almost called it a game. I almost called it a game. A lot of people know about barbed wire. Um, but the thing is, like, I think it's funny that you act- you said show because for me, honestly, it felt like a made for TV 80s, 1980s made for TV movie. Like, like there was something if it wasn't for the boobs, I felt like the boobs were the only thing that made it not a made for TV thing. Mm-hmm. Like the way it was filmed and the way the the the, the quality of the 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 I, acting. I think it was more the, the quality of the line delivery. It, yeah, it felt the like, line like, delivery. A, like a like a daytime soap opera. The way they and delivered the music their too. The music yes. was so bad. Oh, and then the pyrotechnics, <laughs> like the cars just exploding all the time. That I love, was I love Knight the Rider scene where the where, where the car explodes just before impact. Like I'm all like, whoa, car, whoa, 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 calm down, car. You don't have to explode like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I also wanted it was to get, give another thing for context because you, you mm-hmm. would ask me about it because I I watched the I read the comics. Um, Dark, Dark Horse in the early '90s, like they put out a bunch of characters like that, like The Mask and, and Barbed Wire and uh, Judge Dredd and a few others. Um, a Ghost was another one, but Ghost never sadly never got a movie. But um, so it started like in 1994, The Mask came out, and I was all like, this is not an accurate rep- representation of the comics, but I'm having so much fun. I, that I don't care. I think it's I think it's awesome. I think it's fun. And then, they, but they they had already announced that Judge Dredd was going to be in the works, and that and then that came out. And I'm all, this is not good, but maybe their next you know offering can be better. 
And then what you comes know, out the next year? Barbed wire. And I'm like, oh my God, why? You got to give credit where it's due, though. That robot in Judge Dredd is still amazing looking. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah. That all robot right. is cool looking, man. It's so cool. Okay, uh, okay. I, that's all I remember from that movie at this point. I've never seen the first Dredd. It's, I'm not going to recommend it to you, but we might make you watch it at some point. He's pretty cool. Oh, he looks I like, like a, the new Dredd. Do you remember the, the robot? The new Dredd is freaking awesome. Do you, do you remember the robot that was uh um that was working for Boba Fett in uh, on Tatooine that that little <laughs> yeah. like the white robot with the skinny head? So yeah, picture yeah. like him but on steroids. Yeah, and that's that's the robot in Judge Dredd. Him, if you took his head and you put it on a robot from Real Steel. Good. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty yoked Good. out. It's robots. pretty cool. He does uh, look honestly, pretty cool. What was it? A puppet? Oh, was God, it looks so, looks so cool. I, it's been years. I haven't seen it since. Did you I say saw it looks so cool. Thing. Yeah. It does, it does look, look cool, cool. right? It's, cool. it's, it's awesome. It's very cool looking. Um, it's better than everything else in the whole movie. Everything. Everything. Um, but I will say that that actually does sound like something fun we could do at some point when we have two weeks to kill is is uh, watch each Judge Dredd um, and compare them, I guess. But who knows? But anyways, back to Barbed Wire. Yeah, back to Barbed Wire. Uh, I just want to point out the, the peak of Tamora Morrison in that movie was – when he was riding the elevator, making out with barbed wire, and then they get to the top, and and they look, <laughs> so and there's his, and there's uh, there's his wife, Cora D, and he go. His line delivery is a uh, barb. This is my wife, Cora D. And it's like, yeah, he's uh, I was like, am I supposed to take this movie seriously at this point? You are the dumbest character ever. And like, I she couldn't. she doesn't care afterwards. Like, no, nobody cares about that scene afterwards. Like, yeah. at all. Yeah, and then they well, explain later that the relationship started in name only. Well, that but scene, they... like at, when she walks away, like she flicks her her robe open, like oh yeah, why? That's right. Like why are you doing? That? She gives them a little like, flash. Yeah, <laughs> so it was weird. weird. <laughs> it was funny. The funniest thing to me was the nudity was like such weird choices. Like, like so she's in the bubble bath. Mm -hmm. covered in bubbles and yet a boob just keeps popping out yeah yeah yeah. but then when she gets out of the bubble bath they went to painstaking uh, like degrees Persist of, persistent bubbles yeah just bubbles covering every part of her like body so that you can't see anything and i'm like why are we being shy now like i don't understand it was just bobbing up and down like an apple in a in a in a barrel yeah yeah um it was so weird to me and also, yeah. I actually appreciated that shot. That was really cool. How they they had the 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 camera like kind of cutting through the the see through bubble bath bottom or whatever. Yeah. And then how it, how it went up there. I think yeah. in a competent director's hands, that shot could have been awesome. Like in a competent movie, that yeah. would have been a shot that we'd have been like, "Oh man, that's a cool shot. I like that." I think what we're just trying to say is, Pam Anderson. Pam I, and blame I blame. I blame. I uh, blame david hogan for all of this it's not your fault it's not yeah. your fault. Was, was hershey mm -hmm. as big of a star going into the movie though like was baywatch a big deal baywatch was huge. yeah that's what catapulted it was the catapulted. number one syndicated show back then okay in in the world in the world mm -hmm. baywatch was huge huge money like that's have you ever heard the joke that like david hasselhoff the germans love david hasselhoff yeah. Dude, it's Baywatch propelled his career like to insane heights at, like around the world. So even if like Americans thought he was a joke, or, you know, like or or didn't take him seriously, whatever, like the rest of the world absolutely idolized David Hasselhoff and everybody in Wait, Baywatch. Well, they so. they idolized him before. Um, yes, they, they did. Yeah. But like he became super famous. After oh, but that you're one. saying like like he became famous in America after Baywatch is what you're saying? We, I'm saying he became more famous like around the world because of Baywatch, you know, like because Baywatch it like is really easy to market because, you know, like it was selling the American ideal of beauty, right? Like that's what it was doing. It mm -hmm. was just putting all of these amazing, beautiful American women in in skin tight like Speedos and then just like having them run in slow motion and stuff so like yeah it was insanely popular they had a spin-off show that was like baywatch meets twilight zone and it was super weird because uh david hasselhoff was in that one too hmm. that's interesting like you never saw that one mm -mm. yes they had vampires and werewolves and shit like it was called baywatch nights 
Baywatch Nights. <laughs> it's not real. Hold oh, on. it's real. Hold on, it hold was on. it was Baywatch a real Watch thing. Nights. Oh my god, American drama series. Ninety five to ninety seven. Wow, mm-hmm. this looks awesome. This actually oh, looks man. pretty cool. I watched a lot of Baywatch back in the day. I've um, never seen a single episode. Oh, really? I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> okay, but well, I'm not I'm in, not going to watch it. Yeah. In the in the 90s, I mean, it was something to put on TV. So. If if if, uh, if we were in the 90s, if we can somehow go back in time and tell our younger selves to watch Baywatch or not watch it, you know, you they, recommend... remastered, they remastered it and put it up on like Netflix recently. I, I'm never going to watch it, but would we you recommend Remastered Frank. Would you recommend that our younger selves watch Baywatch? Um, it was a rite of passage for me, I suppose. Okay, so so that's a yes. That sounds like a yes. I don't know. Um, yeah. but yeah, uh, actually, David Hasselhoff was really famous for his. I didn't know this until uh, the music. end of high school, but he yeah, he was famous yeah. in the eight. But he was famous in the eighties across Europe for his music, and I thought that was really weird talking to like foreign exchange student friends of mine, um, because they they would be like, oh yeah, we totally used to listen to David Hasselhoff, and I'm all like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then they showed me like an old tape that they had, like an old German tape of David Hasselhoff, and it was, it was fantastically bad. It was, it was, it was like a. Do you guys remember Hulk Hogan's uh, rap record? Or yes. His, yeah, his Hulkamania. You yeah, mean yeah. do I remember that? Because I don't think Ricky's gonna remember that. Oh yeah, I've, Ricky was I've like you were like negative twenty. I've at the heard time. it. Yeah, that thing is it's epic. It's it's pretty epic. It's good. It's almost it's on par with the Tra La La song almost. But where were you going with this question, Ricky? Because I know we, we you wanted to know how famous she was. No, at the I just time. wanted to gauge like, um, so coming off the show, it's you mean Pam I and Tommy? This, yeah, coming off Pam yeah. and Tommy, it seems to me like she was famous, but this was like her big break. So I was just <laughs> curious on how well that kind of tracks. Uh, was, you know this was saying? like. This was her make or break moment, I think, is what it was mm-hmm. going to be. Because, but Baywatch was her big break. And, like, mm-hmm. people, like, you know, they wanted to pay her a ton of money to just keep staying on Baywatch. Cause she, like, she, it, she was just as much the draw as David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Like, people were watching because of those two, those two actors. You know what I mean? Um, different people were watching for different reasons she, she gave she gave a stripperella so that's uh yeah exactly good contribution and, to and humanity so, yeah so it was like she did have a lot going for her at the time uh as far as popularity goes mm-hmm. but i think you know i think as far as demonstrating but acting all chops, post, like playboy and everything right oh playboy was before baywatch okay oh was she a, pl- a playmate she was a playmate, yeah. What, so what over. what what started her career then? What was the what was the first thing she ever did or whatever? Playboy, Playboy, play, play, oh, okay, Playboy started it all. That's yeah. cool. Playboy started it all. She became good friends with Hugh Hefner, um, and then from there she got opportunities to do things like which, uh, you know, Home Improvement and um, and Baywatch. She was in like, Home Improvement. She was. She was what, the. She was CJ. She was girl? the. She was the original uh, mm-hmm. Binford girl. No way, that's awesome. Yeah, she was the original one, and they actually brought her back for like the reunion show or something like later on, like like when they did more, you know, because that show went on for many years. But yeah, but yeah, but she, I think she, I think Home Improvement came right before Baywatch. But I don't, I think she left Home Improvement because they weren't really using her character much, and then when they replaced her on Home Improvement, they started trying to do that more because I think they felt bad for you know not doing anything with that character so yeah the the next character got to be more utilized on the ship and that was really cool okay, i think okay. I, yeah but anyways uh yeah pam pam and tommy uh did did fill in some interesting uh holes in in in, in <laughs> nice in that uh you know in the lives N- in, nice in the lives we're canceled now thanks you know but i'm saying in her life you know it was it was nice to see that because like I didn't really care about, you know, what happened to her back then when I was a, a mm-hmm. teenager, you know, watching, watching her on Baywatch. And then, you know, when I found out about the the tape and stuff like that, or when I saw barbed wire, I just laughed at the trailer and I never went to see that movie. You I just was like, no, tape, you didn't care. no, thanks. No, I never <laughs> bought the tape. I've actually never seen the tape. Dennis had um, a choice between getting the tape or seeing barbed wire. And he stands by his decision, I think. Yeah, no, I've never, I've never seen 
either up until up until today. I've still not seen the tape. Oh, you but watched I have, the tape earlier. Too. I, I, I Extra credit. Do you want? Do but, you guys uh, want to assess the tape next? Is that going to be next week? No. <laughs> no, no. But I will say, I think I, there's a lot of was, Casablanca was, references in the tape. Also, was so. so. Do you consider it wooden acting from her in this movie, like in Barbed Wire? Like, I I don't know if it was wooden acting so much as um, it was painful to see that it was every almost every line of hers was dubbed over it was, was her it, really? yeah. it was it was it was her being dubbing dubbed. she no dubbed way. herself she dubbed yeah. herself but like you could tell because like everybody else you know there's a lot of nightclub scenes right and lots of music mm-hmm. playing and so the audio sounds perfectly fine with all the other actors but every time it's her the audio the music ducks like everything ducks so that and and she just comes mm-hmm. in a little louder and also she's kind of whispering too that's the way she kind of talks in that movie you know what i mean like like just a low uh, low low uh low voice or low tone that she's using and so um it was dubbed all the time and it was killing me because it was just like it just made it feel cheesier than I, it could have been you know because I, mean, I think it's a little a a little b right i don't i don't want to yeah. knock her acting ability but uh, yeah i mean because she brought it in scooby or scary movie three I think she really, well, you know what I mean? Like it, she's, she's not a, I don't want to say she wasn't an actress, but she was not. What are you saying? Like she, she's not a Susan Sarandon. Is the, that what you're the saying? The roles she was given prior to that movie were a lot of non-speaking. How about that? Uh, like, not, like raw not, justice. Like, <laughs> you know, what I, mean? you're like, sh- I feel like you're shaming her, Frank. <laughs> raw justice fantastic show i think i think the thing is is like i want to believe creatively they had an idea for her voice and they tried it and then in post they're just like like, this doesn't work (laughs) try it this way and so then she just got dubbed through the whole damn movie uh but i could look that up and see if there's anything going on there but to me yeah to me it just felt well i mean it's her voice still but you Mm -hmm. know they, they just tried it in a different way they could Darth uh, Mauler with herself, I guess. Like a, like a, a stronger yes. actress probably could have done more with that. But when you're when you're at the acting level that she was, and then having to dub over your stuff over, like it's just a recipe for disaster, right? Like, yeah, yeah. This you're film not set up is for success. This film is listed among the hundred most amusingly bad movies ever made in in Golden Raspberry Award founder. John Wilson's book, the official Razzie movie oh, yeah, guide. Yeah. It actually lost the Razzie that year. Mm-hmm. Really? Um, to I forget what it lost it to. Oh, was it was Stripperella? Was it really? It was, it was, it was Striptease. Sorry. Oh, Striptease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. With uh, what Elizabeth Berkeley, I think. No, no, no. That's uh, Demi Moore, right? Demi Moore Striptease. Wait, which ones? I, I'm losing my stripper movies. Which ones? Which? Okay, I'm gonna have to look it up then. Adam would be able to come through with a uh, strip strip tease uh, information. Adam Rifkin was replaced as director with the less experienced David Hogan after producers decided early dailies were unsatisfactory. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Strip wow. tease was Demi Moore. Demi Moore. Which one's the Elizabeth Berkeley one then? Elizabeth. That's, uh, that's the, that's, um, Elizabeth Berkeley. Oh, you, I always oh, you showgirls, showgirls, showgirls. Thank you. Yeah, showgirls. <clears throat> showgirls uh, is a crazy movie. We should do that one next. Actually, no, no, should please, be, uh, no. Should be I the don't next one. Do one. Well, I couldn't find anything about the dubbing there. Just uh, you know, just looking in trivia section of. of I, IMDb, I was going to say it, it's probably not a movie that people are all like, man, people are clamoring for barbed wire trivia. We better, we better put it up on the, put it up on uh, our internet. It's des- it's definitely been updated recently because somebody put in there what I mentioned to you guys earlier. No and way. <laughs> Clint Clint Howard reprised his role from Barbed Wire in this recent season of uh of uh Pam and Tommy on Hulu. So I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. That is pretty what funny. Actually? They recreate in the movie. They didn't seem to recreate exact scenes because like I was uh, from what I was watching, it didn't look like they were actually scenes from the movie, just like scenes that could have been in the movie. Um, and Clint Howard had a beard in the in the new in the Pam and Tommy version of it. He's I'm not so, shaving. I'm not shaving it for this shit. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's 
good enough. You know, like did, it, did, it, did he at least Caesar? Does he Caesar Romero it and just put makeup all? No, over no, 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 no. It's <laughs> just an old white beard, like yeah, or grayish beard, whatever. He didn't even hide his age. He didn't dye beard. He didn't bust the dye beard. Um, they uh. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that goes to my original premise that they didn't really care about barbed wire enough to recreate scenes from barbed wire on this show, this Pam and Tommy show. Well, I, I'm not an affi- I'm not like, you know, a huge expert on Pam and Tommy. Sorry, I'm a barbed wire, so I can't tell you on your barbed wire. Exactly, I can't tell you exactly what scene, but well, that, you know, but that that feeds into my barbed wire premise also, like that. You, you don't care about barbed wire enough to care about the exact scene inside the Pam and Tommy show, you know? Well, it, she was in the Pam and Tommy thing. She was saying like, it, uh, that's big talk for someone with a detonator strapped to their chest. And yeah. I don't, I don't remember that in the movie. Uh, yeah. I don't know either. That's what I'm saying. I do exactly remember what they said yeah, but, in, but, in the scene. And but I what I'm saying is you movie. care about the show, but you didn't care about like the movie enough to, to, to memorize every line, you know? Oh, well, no, I, I'm pretty sure that I don't remember there that a line. scene in this movie it, when someone had a detonator it, strapped to their chest? It, in fairness, I have, by I have the no way, clue. I have no clue. To, I've give seen the movie the, to give the movie the fairest chance, I actually watched the movie before watching the finale of Bam and Tommy. Oh, I, um, I, wanted, I wanted to know, I wanted to experience the movie before I experienced the end of the show. And you just um, happened to luck into Clint Howard being in the... Clint Howard was actually in it last weekend, and I just know Clint oh. Howard enough. I, I know him enough to see recognize him instantly. But they and, use their but, scenes from the, sh- the movie in both this week and last week. But they, there's more more than just one episode. Of when wire. I say when I say that you don't care too much about barbed wire, you get really defensive. And I'm not I meaning. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. It. I'm not saying it's an insult to not care about barbed wire. In fact, quite the opposite. If you don't care about barbed wire, I think. Uh, I think you've got a lot going on for you. So please don't get defensive about it. I think I got defensive because I've only had, uh, you know, about uh, 10 hours to even ever care about barbed wire. So, um, so <laughs> he was you know, give me some time. Give me some time. Yeah, I know. I, I know my Clint, Clint Howard. Howard. I saw him and I immediately recognized him. And then when I watched barbed wire today, I was like, Oh shit. He was in the original movie too. That's really hilarious. Okay. All right, all right. So yeah. wait, you're a Clint Howard fan. So on three, I'm going to say one, two, three, and then you're gonna we're gonna say uh, your favorite Clint Howard uh, media. Oh, right. that's hard. No, I can't do it. I can't because I we're gonna, I we're gonna do it on we're gonna do it on three. I'll, I'll give you a chance to to think of one, and then mm. you let me know when you're ready. I can't think of anything right now at the moment. I'm drawing a complete blank except barbed wire. But I've seen him in so many things that I can't think of a specific thing. I feel like barbed wire just trumped all of your Clint Howard. Uh, uh, yeah, I just don't remember his 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 like. I think I think being Gentle having a movie. Man. I think a movie <laughs> where Clint Howard is in it is not a mark of an excellent movie. Like it's just. It, <laughs> It's a mark of a movie with Clint Howard in it. That's I don't know, it man. He was in The Rocketeer. Mm-hmm. That's an excellent movie, in my opinion. I don't, you don't think it's I, a... don't, I don't remember that. I don't what? remember him in that. He movie. was in oh. Blood Rain. The the, the, the U Bowl movie. The third yeah. movie. No. Uh, yeah. Well, for the record, I would have said uh, Ice Cream Man is mine. I thought that, that's a good cheesy horror flick from the from the early or mid nineties. Um, but also, I just, like Austin I know what Powers, he, like. he was Austin Powers. Was... I don't remember that. Like what? I don't. Rem- it's not that I. It's not that I go out of my way to remember Clint Howard's scenes. I just know when I see Clint Howard, I'm like, there he is. There's Clint Austin Howard. Powers is brought up in Pam and Tommy too. Is it really? It's, yeah, no. she lost the role to uh, Elizabeth Hurley. Oh no way! She she actually waited too long to commit to the movie, so they wanted her, uh, but but she didn't commit to it because she was trying to get Kim Basinger's role in LA confidential. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad she couldn't commit to Austin powers because, and, or Elizabeth, get Kim Basinger's role. <laughs> Elizabeth, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad both of those things happened, uh, but more, more yeah. so Austin powers. Uh, Elizabeth Hurley was great in that. I thought she was fantastic. But what was funny is Elizabeth Hurley was very well, or very unknown at the time before, you know, like, and they make a joke of that. Cause like, they, you know, when they, sh- they say she lost the role to her, uh, Tommy says, "Who's who? The hell is Liz Early?" And she's like, "I don't know." But well, but Liz I mean, Early got super famous from that movie, you know. So I feel like that that was brief, though. Is she in anything 
Like the last thing I I know she was in was the final season of The Runaways. The Runaways, really? Mm-hmm. I don't remember her being in the final season. I mean, you didn't watch the final. I season. don't. I don't think I watched. I don't think I watched. I never watched the ending. I think I stopped yeah. watching it because I wanted to watch. Uh, she plays Morgan Le Fay in the final season. That's of right. No, 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 no. Wait, I have. I have seen her then because I've seen Morgan Le Fay. Okay. Does she melt in the role or something? I've no, never seen it. Melt in the role. I haven't seen the final season of it. I just know she's in it. As you know as it, at, at one point, I stopped watching The Runaways because I wanted to watch Cloak and Dagger, but then I never watched Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> Until recently, I thought, I, mean. I thought you watched an episode of Cloak and Dagger. Uh, yeah. I watched a few episodes of the first season, but I, I, yeah, just, I, you said you liked I started watching Attack on Titan, and then life right. ended. Well, I think we're pretty much done talking about barbed wire at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like we just we kind of slipped into the soapbox. All the barbed barbed wire talk. Well, I think I think I, I do want to know what you guys like overall. What you'd rate this movie? Like just like uh, from from the perspective of us, you know, being three guys that like to review superhero or heroic movies uh, every week and just talk about them. What what do you think? Scale of one to ten. Four. Uh, I'll give. I'll be more generous and give it a five. I, I think I liked it better as an adult than anything I did. more than a five. I I would feel fine watching again. I don't feel fine watching this again. Uh, <laughs> I would feel fine watching this again uh, with nobody's watching me. Just, uh, just like a spank, spank fest kind of. I mean, movie. just, just for whatever reasons, you know, like I, I um, mean, you still have forty eight hours on your rental, so. I do. Yeah. I do. I, I might just rewatch it to see if they actually did use scenes from it in Pam and Tommy, but I'm probably not going to. See, that's a true fan right there. That's a true barbed wire um, fan. And that's I really, insult, actually. That's I, insult, other actually. than the extremely gratuitous uh, credit scene at the beginning of the movie, <laughs> I actually really did enjoy uh, the, the beginning of that movie. Like, it was fun. I really liked that. You've seen Batman joke that you mentioned earlier, Ricky. Like, I like I that she had gadgets. I like that she was, like, really tough. Well, she had a she gadget. Was, yeah, <laughs> no, no, she, she had her, a, her motorcycle, motorcycle had like rockets yeah. in it. Oh, okay, yeah, she, I forgot about yeah, that. she had motorcycle she, rockets. She had the she it. had the cigarette dart launcher too. Is uh, yeah. Barbara still a comic? Yes, um, I think just, the most it's... recent one was like 2015. Oh, is there something more recent to this? Uh, I, I haven't looked it up in a while. Dark Horse needs the... to put their stuff online. They, they, they they've been mini series. It's not a regular comic. I read that it was actually uh, the the comic. Ended after like a, a year or two after the movie came out. Yeah, the, uh, the comic yeah, stopped in the '90s, but then they, the, they kind of just kept going on mini series. The reboot was, was in modern. 2015. Yes, 2015. Okay. It lasted eight issues, but okay. they're always like they're always like mini mini series. The, the barbed wire comics. Yeah, and I think that's mm-hmm. great. Like when they do those mini series in the mask, I thought I think they work better than anything else. Um, yeah, some some comics don't need to be like you know. Uh, ongoing forever and ever. It's it's better when yeah. you just get a creator, you know, creative team that says, "I have a good story to tell with this," and then it's like, "Okay, let's do it." You know, it's kind of like movies and stuff. So, yeah, I um, totally agree. Yeah, um, I, dark. I wonder if they have Dark Horse comics online yet. I think they, they do. Yeah, I think they I, do. Last time I checked, they didn't have them. Like, as in, like you could read them on on digital or whatever. Um, yeah. They might they might do that now because I wanted to read some back issues of a. Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Hellboy. Hellboy mm-hmm. was a good one back in the day. But yeah, I would say I would say I would almost give this movie a six. But that 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 and the end of it is really just so made for TV and so just schlocky and so set up the sequel, it's like man. Airwolf. So yeah, it is. It felt like Airwolf or Knight Rider or something like that. Yeah. And it just didn't it didn't cut it for me, uh, you know, by today's standards for sure. But I think I probably wouldn't have cut it for me by 1996 standards either, because it just it was just so boring at the end that I just didn't care. Yeah. Um, um, but I will go watch Casablanca at some point soon so that I can I can tell you how much yeah, they ripped off. Which, of one, which one's better? Yeah, which uh, one's but, better? Yeah. But I will say this: I just have one question about the end of that movie. Like, what airport allows you to walk right in with an Uzi? <laughs> It's the future, well, or sorry, it's the pre, past. A pre nine eleven airport. Yeah, th- this pre nine eleven is two thousand seventeen. 
they they didn't you even know have know to take off their yeah, shoes. Nine eleven didn't so happen weird. if if they were. Still... Well, then it's not a pre nine eleven world. <laughs> Whatever the Civil it's War just... did, it stopped the nine eleven of that universe. Yeah, so gotcha. we got it. We they got to gotcha. thank the Civil War. For you don't that. remember taking yeah. a gun to the airport back in the day? Yeah, no. I used to just take guns I, all the time. I, I used to have bandoliers of bullets all, no. all over. Yeah, <laughs> I you know I even hated Tamara Morrison's gun acting. I just kept watching him. It was like, so put, bad. It he was wasn't so aiming, bad. He wasn't aiming in the right place. It was like it was going so like so bad. And there was some other guy that was dual wielding pistols, and he was like bang, 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 bang. He was like waving his fists around and stuff. And yeah, uh, the 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 I actually really thought Pam Anderson's gun acting was pretty impressive compared to a lot sure, of the people yeah. in in that movie. But Tamara Morrison, man, if I would have seen this movie then, I would have just like. Immediately just dialed in on how shitty whispers, whispers just, you. Yeah, this man is Boba Fett. And then, oh, yeah, and then I would have read. I would have read about like Star Wars and his casting, and I'd be like, no, like I, that's how I would have felt. So, if, if, if you would have known about this in '96, would you have tried to take effort to stop George Lucas from casting him? Yeah, it's probably better I didn't watch it because then I might have been in jail for assassinating somebody. You know what I mean? Like it's. <laughs> It's quite possible. So like, how does know. the future play out with a dead Tamora Morrison? For for more questions like that, <laughs> tune into the soapbox after the show. Where we're gonna thank we're gonna discuss alternate alternate history. Thank you for not making me answer that. I don't I'm not saying I actually wish the man dead. Um but you're saying I'm, uh world peace would have occurred <laughs> had that happened. Like you would have got the Nobel Peace Prize, ironically. Oh, you would have been man. it would have been the most ironic Nobel Peace Prize ever for killing killing Tamora Morrison. Man. Yeah. It's true. Uh, one, one, yeah. one of the uh, from the mask, one of Dorian Tyrell's muscle was one of the muscle guys that gets shot in the in Clint Howard's gang or whatever. Oh, that's mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, it was the same dude. I thought that was funny. Tiny Lester was in this movie for yeah. like a second. That's right. That's right. He was he was I the was, bouncer at the club. I was pretty what? excited to see him, and then he got underused. Yeah. What are we watching uh, next week? What are we doing next week? Oh uh, well, next week I think we all agreed. Uh, we're gonna go way back. I think it's pre nineteen ninety six, actually. Dick Tracy with uh, Warren Beatty and Madonna, yep. and Tamara Morrison. Oh, Madonna no. is actually in it. Madonna is in that movie. Yeah, yep. was that her acting and, uh, debut? Nineteen ninety, no, it says. Not not her acting debut, but maybe her her first really. I want to say it was like big, what is that? Suddenly movie. seeking Susan or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Suddenly seeking Susan. Uh, but yeah, it was like definitely a very high profile uh, McDonald's toys kind of movie. Oh you know yeah, I mean like I I, meal, I have I've never seen it. I have vague rumblings of it, so I'm excited to kind of demystify it. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I loved it when it came out. I loved it so much it because cool. I knew I knew that it was something that came from my parents' era of of, of comic books. Oh my god, like, it was so racist in the in yeah. your parents' era of comic books. Yeah, exactly. I like yes. Go Go Gomez. He was like the worst caricature of a Mexican person. Like he's that, like Speedy Gonzalez, like taken to ten. But there's your teaser for next week. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna go. We're gonna dive into Dick Tracy. Uh, but it is time to wrap this up, True Believers. So thanks to Frank and Ricky for nerding out with me today. If you'd like to take a moment to let people know where they can find you, now's your chance. I know you're going to skip that chance. Um, but you can find me at Denix Media all over the place, all over the socials. Uh, and uh, But mostly, especially here every Friday on, uh, on YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. Um, and then Frank... Uh, yep. I want to I want to say thanks to our patrons for supporting our growth and to our audience for tuning in. Uh, and if they had fun, what should they do? They should smash that like button the way Tamora Morrison smashes any role that he's in. And they should also uh, leave, <laughs> leave a comment. Go ahead and leave a comment. It helps our algorithm and uh, join our Patreon if, uh, if you feel like it. If you don't have any money, if you don't want to do any of those things that I said, then just spread the word. Be like, hey, you should check out Den X Media. Mm-hmm. And then just laugh at them when they do, like make it ironic. And then we're just going to get famous ironically. And then we're going to crush you. We're going to come back and crush you. We're going to be waiting in the wings like like a tiger. And you're going to be like a deer with a cloven hoof. And we're just going to pounce. Tiger blood. That was my favorite one ever, Frank. Thank you right. so much. Appreciate it. That, that, I really felt that. I felt that. And uh, I really believe that people will feel that it, it, this will age very well. Yeah. This, people, will, this will be great. I when people wait. go back through our, our library and they're like, you know, it's a good one. 
I highly recommend you guys watch the barbed wire episode. Dude, did he threaten us? I think he threatened <laughs> us. I'm going to get him. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Dan Excelsior, True Believers. Enough said. Time for the soapbox. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>